Welcome to Project Anima Heart. Heart is a ball jointed servitor doll that I've designed and sculpted digitally. Rather than printing a prototype of this doll that is later cast in other types of resins, I'm looking to do a finished product right off my printer. The problem I've had with 3D printing resins I've used in the past is that they're too translucent and brittle. When parts rub against each other, especially at the joints, they tend to scratch or powder off real bad. I need a more mechanically sturdy resin. Not hoping for a completely scratch-proof resin, because to be so, it would need to be made of diamond. Also, whatever resin it is, I'd still need to be able to cut and sand it in order to clean up any support stocks. So with this brief in mind, I'm looking for something that is going to be an improvement, that is functionally like a traditional cast resin doll, how it is wear resistant. The figure I'm making stands about 35 centimeters in height. I'm using the Cheetah Box 1.9 slicer, and my printer is the first generation Elegoo Satin with a 4K LCD screen. I think what gives resin and lots of plastic material its wear or scratch resistance is basically a high level of tensile strength, as well as a little flex in it that acts as a shock absorber. I approached Resi1 because their anti-impact resin, which is nylon-like, and M70 resin have properties that I might be looking for. After reading my project proposal of their resin's specific use in ball jointed dolls in my portfolio of works, they sponsored me with a couple of bottles to review in exchange for my data and sharing my findings. If you'd like to learn more about the properties of these two resins, please head over to resi1.com. For my first experiment, I'm printing with 100% anti-impact resin. As warned on their website, this resin has quite a pungent odor and came out thick like wall paint in my Australian climate, so it's advised to always preheat the resin to 80 degrees Celsius. These are my print settings. There's print profiles you can download from their website, but I ended up reducing the exposure time and increasing lift distances as I found that puts less stress on my FEP. Just like how models in grey tend to show off better details than pure white, I find the slight grey tint in the anti-impact resin helps make the resin more opaque, thus more visible. Though I recognize that the darker tint may present problems if you're looking to make lighter colored models. This resin requires a little more careful timing and may not be so beginner friendly. For one thing, before it's cured, exposure to air and alcohol or solvent will degrade its quality and may compromise the scratch resistance of the surface you seek later on. Too much air or solvent and it can become soft and rubbery, like this. Very thin structures need to be adequately supported. I show here a few clips of me removing these rubbery supports. On their product information page, Reza1 advised that you can use a thermostatic drying oven to restore its rigidity and strength. But since in this instance the rubberiness I had wasn't too widespread and only most noticeable on the supports, I personally haven't used a drying oven. Simply curing it under UV light for 10 to 15 minutes seemed to have restored its firmness. While parts are still unstrung and easier to hold, I might do some friction tests. Notice I still have support knobs sticking out on the ball joints. Usually that would scratch up the socket already. But here I haven't noticed any scratches on the socket side. Let's do that one more time. Okay, that's looking good. No scratches on the socket and no powdering on the ball joint. Let's test a more serious joint, like this one. It's looking promising. I haven't noticed any deep scratches yet. I'll do this one more time. Looking at the socket side, things are looking pretty good in here too. For my second experiment, I wanted to know if I can mix the M70 resin, which is known for its ability to retain high details but quite brittle, with some of the anti-impact resin. My mix here is 80% anti-impact, which is white grey, and 20% M70, which gives it that salmon tint. These are the print settings which had worked for me for this particular mixture ratio. The mixing of the two resins is giving me an interesting result. 
For one thing, I think this color is a very nice fleshy color. Not as orange as using the M70 by itself, but still nicely opaque. There's something about it that makes layer lines blend better, resulting in very smooth surface. Almost no need to sand it. I think for someone who likes to do doll face-ups, the opacity of the surface is quite desirable. Light doesn't pass through this as easily, producing sharper shadows that in turn bring out the features. So let's do some friction test. Looks like the ball and the socket look okay for now. I think the addition of the anti-impact resin helps give it a more nylon-like property, so it's more tough and wear resistant. I'll try this again with some support nubs on the inside of the socket. That should scratch up the ball. But the ball is looking fine as far as I can see. I'll do some more friction tests after the doll is strung. But for now, I just want to test while pieces are easier to hold. And it's looking good so far. No noticeable powdering. So yay, I got him finished and strung up, my first servitor. Excitement aside, let's take a look at his joints. So first up, this is the previous resin I used to use before Resi 1. In this part, I always get quite a lot of powdering and rub marks like these. Now this is the Resi 1 resin by comparison. In my opinion, you can still harm this resin and scratch it if you really want to. But under reasonable use like this, this resin is proving a much more durable option than before. I think so far this is looking good. Occasionally I would see a shiny spot as the joints wear in, but not to the point where the resin itself disintegrates into powder, nor do I see horrible rubbing marks. This is another part that I used to get a lot of powdering and rubbing marks using the previous resin. From a few movements, I used to get powdering on the ball joint itself, and more noticeably, marks inside the socket. So this is that section again, but this time with Resi 1 resin. Both the ball and socket don't have any powdering and looking very wear resistant. This is another section that I get powdering issue using the previous resin. There's some on the neck ball, but more visibly here on the socket side. Okay, here's my resin 1 print for the same section. I left the original audio on so you can hear what this resin sounds like. So the neck part is looking quite free of scratches or wear marks that would normally occur, especially from the edge of the neck socket friction. The socket under the head is also looking clean and in good condition. I'll try and show you the neck socket now. And yes, it's looking much better than the old resin. I don't notice any powdering there. I'll play around with some of the other joints and hopefully you can see and form your own opinion. The ball joint of the hand, it's looking free of wear marks. Let's see if we can see the socket now. And it's looking pretty good, no scratches or wear marks there too. I'll take a look at the elbow now, this is a joint that moves around quite often. I think the ball joint and the socket look pretty good. Let's check out the upper arm now a little bit. The socket side, things are looking pretty good. It's clean and scratchless. The ball is also looking pretty good. I'm going to take a look at the belly joint now. I'm going to twist it around like this a bit. Yes, quite pleased with the way this resin is holding up. 
Now this is a ratchet joint, where there is a track for the limb to lock into at various angles. If there is anywhere very prone to wear marks, the ratchet tracks would be it. But here the ball joint and the ratchet track look good. Taking a look at one of the knee joints, Okay, I'm happy with the way the ball joint's looking. There's no powdering here. Let's just check that the socket is good. And it is. I don't see any scratches or wear marks. Let's check out the belly of the beast. The ball side is looking good. No scratches here. Yeah, I'm happy with the way this resin is holding up under friction. There's something about it. I can feel that nylon-like texture in it. It just feels more flexy and grippy, rather than a surface that's bone dry and feels like it can chip easily. I find myself having a bit more confidence at handling this doll a bit rougher than I would had it been made with my other resin. And this is another ratchet joint of the hind legs. Let's give him a look. And here the ball side is looking pretty clean. There's no powdering that I notice um, or horrible line marks or rubbing. And the socket side is also looking pristine. So yeah, it's looking good. In conclusion, I think the anti-impact resin is definitely an improvement to my previous resins. It's a lot more wear resistant, doesn't disintegrate into powder when it rubs against each other, and therefore, as a ball jointed doll, it makes it functional. If I didn't want to mess around with resin dyes, it can be mixed with the M70 to produce a nice fleshy color. I like the M70 resin too. There's something about it that just holds crisp, high details, and it's nicely opaque. I haven't experimented with adding dyes or really dark colors though, so I don't know at this stage if some scuff marks will still show. But it's a whole different topic, buffing dark resins. So that's my Resi1 experience. Resi1 makes all kinds of specialty resins, which you can check out at resi1.com. I'll let you form your own opinion of them. If you'd like to see me make more resin experiment videos, please subscribe and hit that like button. You can find me on YouTube under Helene Holtz 5300 or follow me on Instagram under dkeats888.03. I'll see you later and all the best to you doll makers.